Hello and welcome everyone to my first tutorial for Supremacy 1914 for absolute beginners. I decided to make this video since, well, there is no such content on YouTube, so here you go. I will talk about the basics, so feel free to skip to any part shown on the screen, and if you're interested in more, just let me know. But first, we're going to choose a game. Uh, it doesn't really matter which game you choose, but if you're an absolute beginner, I recommend starting with the smaller maps, maximum 30 maybe. And especially if you have an old phone or bad laptop, I suggest not joining uh, the 500 game since it's going to be a struggle. So to get started, I'll be joining a small game and telling you the basics. Yeah, let's go with this one. Join. So, which one to choose? Well, it doesn't matter. It's completely up to you. I won't be discussing that in this video, but I'll be starting with Caucasus. So, the foundation. Well, when you start any game, doesn't matter which game it is, doesn't matter which map it is, you have to do two things. One is select all of your provinces and hold shift down and select like this uh, and build recruiting office. Recruiting offices are crucial and any new province you capture or any province you have, the first thing you need to do is build recruiting offices. They provide you with soldiers and they cost nothing in upkeep. The second thing you need to do is build workshops. Now, usually people don't pay attention to where they build workshops, but I'll give you a tip now. What you need to do is build maximum three or two workshops in the beginning and preferably place them first and foremost in double research provinces such as this one and this one and third one well in this case wherever you prefer but I would recommend building it somewhere where the enemy can't reach it such as here for example that is sandwiched between two of my provinces or especially here where the enemy can't get to it why is this important? Well, first of all, you need to upgrade workshops to level 2 to increase the speed of production. And later on, especially from day 8 in most of the games, you can upgrade it to factory. And factories provide you with moral development and resource production. So, early on in the game you make decisions, so that in later on in the game you don't have to regret it, and you have more resource production. Once you start constructing level 2 workshops, you need to start producing armored cars. Now this decision falls completely onto you and it usually depends on your country. My country in this case has a lot of iron ore and lumber production so I know that in the future I will have the necessary resources required to build more armored cars or even artillery early on. And that's it. That's all you have to do in the beginning. The next things you do depend completely on the country you choose, your location, uh, the resources you have or you don't have in this case. And that brings us to stage two. So I'm going to start with resources. As you can see in this menu, we can manage the growth rate or daily consumption uh, within three sections. Grain is always more expensive, so try to save it as much as possible. I'm going to focus my production on iron ore since it's more valuable in this case because of armored cars and the artillery later on as well as fortresses. Make sure you have enough oil since they're usually hard to get and the rest of the resources are usually cheaper on the market. The second thing you need to be aware of is the roads. You can only travel on the roads. This gives you a big advantage in that you know exactly what options the enemies have or you know which options you have. So in this case I know that if I'm being attacked, I can be attacked through three provinces. Southern pro province, which is accessible by only one road. In case of Russia, he can attack me two ways. In this case, it's a bit of a disadvantage because I don't know which one to protect specifically. But it's even worse for him because he only has one province while I can attack him through two roads. Third thing you need to be aware of is your surroundings. Uh, in supremacy, there are two types of countries. There are minor countries, which is always controlled by the AI, and there are player controlled countries. In the beginning, it's most likely that all of them are shown as active players, but later on they can become inactive, so it's really important to pay attention to that. For example, in this case, Ukraine does not have any player, which is why there is no 
a player logo or player name under their capital. Once the player becomes inactive, the AI will take over the country. You can notice if they are inactive or not by zooming out like this and paying attention to the player logos. If there is a small computer behind the player logo here, then that means that they are controlled by an AI. This completely depends on the game rules, which you can check out under the newspaper for browser version. And as you can see here, minimum activity period is two days. So if in two days you don't check your game, two days of real life, then the AI will take over your country. So let's move on to planning. Well, we already did a lot of planning by positioning our workshops in double resource provinces. So later on, when we upgrade them to factories, we'll be making more resources. And I placed the third one here because I know I will have high iron ore production. So I'm going to prepare my third armored car. Now, if you're a country such as Russia and you have better food production, you're better off by building barracks. Although you need to pay attention to their upkeep, since their daily upkeep in terms of grain is pretty high. So the next thing I'm going to do is use what I gathered when looking at roads and move my units to provinces that are more vulnerable while keeping the provinces that are safer within my country uh, empty. So in this case, I'm going to move them to south. Now that I'm moving my troops down south, the Ottoman player is most likely going to see it because they have the same view range as I do. Now since I'm doing this, I basically decided, randomly in this case, to attack the Ottoman Empire which means it's most likely useful to have friends up north. So what I'm going to do is contact Russia and propose a random offer. It can be whatever you prefer, since in this game you're not really bound to any allegiances or any choices. So I'm going to offer him a non-aggression pact, and whether he accepts it or not, or whether I or he will keep it or not, completely depend on us as players. Uh, what I'm trying to say by this is that you need to pay attention to which players are next to you and what you need to plan what kind of relationships you want to have with them. Another thing you can do when it comes to relationships is, well, this was quick, he likes it. So what I'm going to do is send him a trade offer and when it comes to trade you can send a province, relation or resources. In this case I'm going to send a relation offer and I'm going to offer him right of way for right of way. Um, I'm not going to do share map yet because they can cancel it anytime they want. And at the moment I don't trust them or I don't know what their intentions are. So I'm going to send right of way offer. Uh, what you can also do is create a coalition of your own under this section. And the limitation on how many players you can have in your coalition depends on each map. But for this map, it's maximum three players. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to do it because I want to stay solo. So, the resources. To increase your resource production, you can do one of two things. You can, one, wait and increase the morale of your provinces. The higher the morale of your province, the more it produces. And two, invest and build more buildings into them that increase their production. In this case I'm building a factory here later on which will increase its production the higher the factory level. Uh, you can build railway to increase production and harbor. What you need to pay attention to though are two things. One which is the upkeep of a building or a province. As I mentioned in the beginning barracks have high upkeep in terms of grain but railways for example they increase the production but they also have a small upkeep for coal. Another thing is, once you capture a province, its morale will go down to 25%, which means that it is most likely going to rebel unless you place enough troops within it, but also that it has negative resource production, uh, which means that any new province you capture is going to damage your resource income, most likely your food income, so you can't expand too fast without paying attention to your resources. And this brings us to one of our first big no-no's, which is do not, under any circumstances, 
let your food income, especially grain income or stock, go below zero. So, if for example you have zero tons of grain and your production is in minus, you can't increase it above zero, your troops, first of all, will lose morale at the end of each in-game day. Your provinces will lose morale at the end of each in-game day. And if their morale is too low, they will most likely rebel. Which brings me to second big no-no, managing the newly captured provinces. In this example, where I'm playing as Russia and I captured uh, Bulgaria's capital, the morale of this newly captured province is 25%, and I have to keep about 6 units within it to keep the chance of uprising to 0%. If the chance of uprising is higher than 0% and you have no troops placed within the region, it will most likely rebel and join a random nation or most likely the nation you just captured it from. And let's not forget our first rule, which is to build a recruiting office in any and every province. The next thing I want to mention is protecting your provinces. Uh, what I see with new players in a lot of cases is that they place their troops uh, on the roads and they expose their provinces from the attacks on the side or they don't protect their provinces. It's important to keep the province and not the dominance on the road because once the enemy controls the province it decreases your movement speed. You can see it here, on speed of your own territory, which is your own province, you have 100% movement speed. On your allies' territory, it is 70%. On enemies' territory, it's 35%. The most important thing you need to remember is to protect your capital at all costs. Once you lose your capital, all of your provinces will lose 10% morale. But most importantly, they won't be gaining any more morale at the end of the day afterwards. You'll also lose all your money and most of your resources. But this goes both ways. So if you take enemy capital, all of your provinces will gain 10% morale and you'll also gain all their money and most of their resources. So what I would advise is to always try and take enemy capital last since all the newly capped provinces as well as your current ones will gain 10% morale. When it comes to war you need to pay attention to two things. One is the morale of your troops which is basically their health points in some way and also determines the strength of their attack and defense and the second thing is the number of your troops in one stack. So this means that if I attack the Ottoman Empire in this case with all units separately like this they're gonna attack one by one and they, they will deal less damage because a smaller stack has less damage than a fuller stack so what I'm going to do is well select to attack everyone and then I'm gonna select everyone and then press delay which will automatically set each individual stack at a delay making sure that they all stack up together at one spot and attack as one to this province. So the last tip I'm gonna leave you with is well how to protect yourself. The first thing you need to take care of is your borders again. In this case Russia accepted my right of way offer which is why they're shown as allied but I don't completely trust them so what I'm going to do is demilitarize our border but only by a section. And Ukraine also contacted me through diplomacy and asked to be allied, so I'm going to do the same thing he's doing and demilitarize our border, but I'll leave a little bit more troops behind because it's harder for me to get to these provinces and it takes me longer because of disembarking. You can also not ally with anyone near you or simply wait for them to get weak and strike them afterwards. Or you can sit in your country, wait for new troops, build up your army and invade afterwards. So that concludes our video on the absolute basics for the game. I hope this is helpful and you gain some knowledge from this. If you have any questions or you want any more tips about anything, just let me know. And of course, don't forget to enjoy the game, 
and hopefully I'll see you on the battlefield.